breaking welcome to today's news here is the headlines unam dikano reviews next action after losing one billionaire suit against federal government unam dikano reviews next action after losing one billionaire suit against federal government to my dear listeners from wherever you're listening from please stay tuned as i read today's news and please do ensure you like subscribe and share unam dikanu the leader of the indigenous people of biafra lipop has been a central figure in the ongoing debate over self-determination and autonomy in Nigeria. Recently, his legal battle against the Nigerian federal government took a significant turn as he lost a monumental one billionaire lawsuit. This setback, however, seems only to have emboldened Kanu, as he swiftly unveiled his next cause of action in a characteristically defiant manner. The lawsuit itself stemmed from allegations of human rights abuses and torture during Kanu's detention. Despite his legal team's efforts to seek justice, the court ruled against him, citing lack of substantial evidence. This outcome, while disappointing to Kanu and his supporters, has not deterred him from his advocacy for Biafran independence. In a press conference held shortly after the court's decision, Kanu reiterated his commitment to the cause of Biafran sovereignty. He denounced the ruling as politically motivated and vowed to escalate his effort on the international stage. The struggle for Biafrans is not just a legal battle, but a moral and historical imperative he asserted, framing his fight within a broader narrative of self-determination and human rights. Kanu's next steps, including intensifying diplomatic effort to garner international support for the Biafran cause. He plans to engage with foreign government, human rights organizations, and international legal bodies to raise awareness about what he perceives as systematic injustices faced by the Igbo people and other ethnic minorities in Nigeria. Moreover, Kano aims to mobilize his followers within Nigeria and the diaspora rallying them behind the renewed push for a self-rule. His rhetoric remains fiery and uncompromising, reflecting deep-seated grievances over decades of perceived marginalization and oppression. Critics of Kanu argue that his approach risks further destabilizing Nigeria, a country already grappling with ethnic tensions and security challenges. 
precaution that his actions could incite violence and undermine efforts towards national unity and coercion. Regardless of one's stance on Kanu's methods or ideology, his determination and resilience are undeniable. He continues to command significant support among disenfranchised communities in southeastern Nigeria and beyond, making him a potent force in the country's political landscape. As Unamdekano presses forward with his agenda, the implications for Nigerians' future remain uncertain. His actions have the potential to shape the discourse on governance, identity and democracy in Africa's most populous nation, challenging its leaders and citizens alike to confront difficult questions about unity, diversity and the right of ethnic minorities. So my dear listeners, now we've come to the end of our today's news. And now before I go in contribution to the news I've read so far, to me personally, Odin Unamdekanu at the DSS detention, as of now, I don't I don't think it's something it's something on I don't think it's something reasonable. It better be invited, have a round table talk with him, and then sort things out. All these things would would cause problems, ethnic bias, it would cause a whole lot of problems. The federal government should at least, you know, invite him, have a round table talk with all these Biafra.